back. I'm back after traveling for four weeks, but nobody cares about that because the Champions League is back, man. Everyone's favorite club competition, the most prestigious club competition in the world, makes its return, which also means the return of this anthem. Isn't it beautiful? By the way, so rude of me. I'm Adrian and this is Ravona TV. And we do Champions League roundups, predictions, weekend roundups, player bios, explainers, and so much more. So if you dig the content, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when I upload because YouTube is trash now and doesn't really send notifications to people if they don't hit the bell. It's so stupid. Oh, you subscribe to this channel? That doesn't mean that you'd like to know when they upload, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Anyways, I'll save my YouTube moaning for another day because let's talk about Tuesday's action first. Starting with Group A, where the away teams reigned supreme on this match day. Spoiler alert, first up Atletico Madrid away to AS Monaco as the Spanish side looked to get past their weak start domestically, one win, two draws, and a loss, while the Principality boys AS Monaco looked... Uh, well, to do exactly the same as they have a win, two draws, and two losses, and sit in 15th. But, as I said, it was the away teams that did the winning on the day. And goals from Diego Costa and Jose Maria Jimenez, my man in FIFA 18, saw the Rojiblancos through to a 2-1 victory. Kudos to them as well as they were trailing 1-0 after 18 minutes before Costa's equalizer in the 31st minute, his ninth in the Champions League for Atletico, while Jose Maria La Cabeza Jimenez scored another header, which is pretty much all that he scores for Atleti, as only one of his seven goals for the club has been with another part of his anatomy. So, a good start for Atleti. Borussia Dortmund went away to the Belgian champions, Club Bruges, Conan Leike, Voetballer Vereniging. Last season, Borussia Dortmund struggled majorly in this competition, not as badly as my team, Benfica, but a struggle nonetheless. And with new coach Lucien Favre making his Champions League debut with his new club after going unbeaten domestically, you'd forgive the Dortmund fans for being a little nervous about this match. And perhaps those nerves were justified, as after a long match filled with Dortmund possession, but very few shots actually on target, they finally got their breakthrough in the 84th minute, thanks to an extremely fortunate goal for Christian Pulisic, as the defender's clearance went right off of his boot and looped over the Bruges keeper, which, unlucky for Bruges, was the match winner as Dortmund get a victory in their first match while Monaco and Bruges struggle with their ways towards losses. Funnily enough, it was Group B that got us started out on the day with some early kickoffs, we'll have to get used to those, and both matches provided some entertainment, though for differing reasons. One team stomped another, while another team were back to their bottling best. We'll start with the former. Lionel Messi and FC Barcelona hosted PSV and it looks as if Messi is really wanting to cut that Champions League top goal scorer of all time deficit down and make some ground on Ronaldo. With a 4-0 win, Leo scored yet another hat trick, including an incredible curling effort from a free kick. In fact, that was the 8th direct free kick he scored in 2018. He became the first player in Champions League history to score 8 hat tricks in the competition, one more than Cristiano Ronaldo. How would he do? Well, stay tuned. Poor PSV, they had the horror of going up against a Lionel Messi that was absolutely on it tonight, and has now scored 7 goals in 6 appearances this season. Ousmane Dembele gave Messi a run for the goal of the game though, as he scored a banger from outside the 18, which was his fifth goal from just six appearances. Happy to see him doing so well so far, after that terrible start to his Barca career last season, where he was injured before he even got up and running. In the other match, the Champions League anthem finally returned to the San Siro. Let me know if you ever need me to play it live on my recorder. And despite being a bit of a crap game at times, it had a truly incredible finish. But before we got to the finish, there was Christian Eriksen's deflected goal that put Spurs ahead in the 53rd minute. And given Inter's relative flaccidness, it seemed as if Spurs were on their way to stealing three points on the road. Well, Mauro Icardi had something to say about that, as with only his first strike of the match and his first shot on target in the Champions League, he was able to smash a volley from outside the box past Vorm. 1-1, one, one, and I'm sure Spurs fans were thinking, I right, one point, we'll take it. 
But Vecino, the man who's late winner against Lazio last season got Inter into the Champions League, decided to take matters into his own hands, heading past Vorm in the 92nd minute. 2-1 for Inter and Giorgio Chiellini's words from last season still seem to ring true given the collapse. Quote, It's the history of Tottenham. They always created many chances to score so much, but at the end, they miss always something to arrive at the end. Too true, Giorgio, and hey, for the first time since Poch has taken the helm at Spurs, they have lost three matches in a row. Is this a product of not improving their squad at all? Because it kind of feels like that, given how easily complacency can leak into this squad. When there's no new blood to mix it up and give you some competition for your spots. Alright, Group C where Napoli went away to the long, long tunnel onto the Red Star pitch. <laughs> And for all that walking, came away with just a nil-nil draw. Not worth it, but at least their Fitbit step count for the day will be right up there. Disappointing for them as they were all over Red Star, dominating them under every column, but as I said, Red Star won't be great, but will provide us with some fun moments. And perhaps this was one of those moments. Frustrating one of their opponents. That rhymes. Unintentionally though. Now, in the other match in Group C, the Anfield faithful were served up quite the treat for their start to the 2018-19 Champions League campaign as they played host to PSG. Daniel Sturridge, who started ahead of one-eyed Bobby the Pirate, made his first Champions League start for Liverpool since joining the club back in 2013 and his first Champions League start since March of 2012. And in his first start, he got his second goal of the season. Then, Liverpool were awarded a penalty just six minutes later, which James Milner put away. That's James Milner to you. In fact, Milner's last 10 goals for Liverpool have all come from the penalty spot. Absolute pen god. But PSG pegged them back by one five minutes before the half, as Thomas Mounier slotted past Alisson, some solid technique there, into the second half and largely against the round of play, Mbappe scored thanks to the solid, solid play of Neymar. That was his fifth of the season this far. But Liverpool utilized old one-eyed Bobby off of the bench and he utilized his scoring prowess in the 93rd minute as he skinned the absolute soul out of Marquinhos. That doesn't really make sense, you can't skin a soul, but before smashing the ball into the bottom corner for the winner. Mad lad! And sick celebration as well. PSG didn't look great at all, and in fact, according to Squawka, Virgil van Dijk created more chances than all of their players, besides Neymar of course. So, a great win for Liverpool, especially with Napoli drawing with Red Star. Group D. Now, Schalke versus FC Porto and Galatasaray versus Livin La Vida Locomotive. And we'll start with the former once again, with Schalke making their return to the Champions League at home to FC Porto. I went to Porto on my trip, actually, quite a nice city, way smaller than I thought it would be. But anyways, this match was quite close. Well, I mean, duh, it ended 1-1. But I mean more as a contest, with Porto, in my opinion, being the stronger of the two sides. In fact, Porto had a chance to take an early lead, but Alex Delge blew it from the penalty spot, though credit must be given where credit's due, and it should be given to Farman in goal. What a save. Briel and Bolo pushed Schalke ahead in the second half, but in the 75th minute, Octavio told Alex Delge to take a break from penalty duty and slotted it away to make it 1-1. Pretty non-existent call, by the way. Morega made a masterpiece from absolutely nothing there, so shout out Morega. Oh yeah, and a big shout out to Iker Casillas, who has now participated in a ridiculous 20 Champions League campaigns now. Unprecedented. In the other match, Galatasaray made their return to the Champions League with an emphatic 3-0 win over Lokoro Lokomotiv Moskva. No, I won't repeat Live in La Vida Lokomotiv again. I apologized to, for that earlier. That really sucked. Lokomotiv is really struggling domestically with just nine points from their first seven matches. Rough. Gala, by the way, are at the top of the table in Turkey. The one sort of blemish in this match, however, has to be the sending off of Indai in the 87th minute, which was quite senseless given that Gala were already 2-0 up. So, a great start for Gala as their two biggest rivals in this group end up drawing. Alright, Group E, Benfica vs Bayern and Ajax vs AEK Athens. Well, we don't need to go over the Benfica match, do we? I didn't think so. No. You know what? I can face the music. I did so all last season with Benfica. I can do it again. Take the good with the bad. And the bad in this case was slumping to a 2-0 loss to Bayern at home. Were Bayern incredible? Nope. 
but they were clinical and were able to generate chances. Which isn't a massive compliment to them when they're up against our terrible, terrible defense, especially down our right. But anyway, the goals came from Robert Lewandowski, who easily stepped around a sprawling Grimaldo, and a really well-worked attack led to Renato Sanch, who else, finishing it off for 2-0. His first goal since leaving Benfica is scored against Benfica. Benfica had possession, but did absolutely nothing with it, by the way. Every attack broke down around the 18, no matter what nice interplay they had leading up the pitch. In the other match, Ajax exuded their dominance in class over AEK Athens with three second half goals absolutely stunning the visitors, with one goal in particular from Tagliafico knocking the stuffing out of the Greek champs in the 90th minute. Greek champs, not Green champs, I don't know what I said there. He probably didn't mean to hit it like that, but hey, it looked cool and that's all that matters. Tagliafico's goal sandwiched a strike from Dutch midfielder Donny van de Beek which makes for an incredible return to the Champions League for Ajax as they are top of Group E on goal difference. Of course, it's the first game, so we'll see how things play out, but Ajax certainly looked impressive. What did you think of them? In Group F, oh man, did we ever have some fun in Group F. First off, in one of the early kickoff matches of the day, Shakhtar Donetsk hosted Hoffenheim, who were making their Champions League debut. In doing so, Julian Nagelsmann became the youngest coach in Champions League history. It was quite the back and forth match as well, as Hoffenheim twice went ahead, only for Shakhtar to twice claw them back. Of note, Florian Grilich scored Hoffenheim's first ever Champions League goal, but Ismaili made it 1-1. Before the half was up though, Havard Nordweit headed home to put Hoffenheim ahead. That's a tongue twister. In the second, however, substitute Macon smashed low pass Bauman, and that's how this one ended. 2-2, and if you decided to watch this one, you probably would have been glad that you did because I found it extremely exciting. As for this next match, if you're a City fan, perhaps you'd have wished you hadn't watched this one as things got off to an extremely shaky start with Fabian Delph swinging and whiffing at the ball, leaving Cornet with enough space to finish. And judging by Delph's reactions to hard times in the all or nothing Man City series from Amazon, I'm sure he entered the tunnel at half sort of like this. Man, it's fucking shit, man. Fuck off your ass, man. Fuck. Something like that. And if that didn't get him to that point, then in the 43rd minute, Nabil Fekir's thunderous strike certainly did, which was his first goal in the Champions League. Now, City did pull him back in the second half thanks to a Leroy Sané cutback, which Bernardo Silva converted, but in the end, Lyon became the first French team to get a win away to City. On top of this, City have become the first English side to lose four consecutive matches in the Champions League. Yikes. Pep may want to hide out in the stands for a little bit longer to sort of weather that storm, you know? Moving right along to Group G, Victoria Blitzen and Seska Moscow played out to another 2-2 draw on the day. This time, however, the Czech hosts got a 2-0 lead early-ish. They were 2-0 up after 41 minutes, thanks to a double from Michael Kermencic. But just after the half, Shalov cut it down to 2-1, and a late, late penalty led to Seska tying it all up with Nikola Vlasic doing the converting. So, all even there, but what would happen with Real and Roma? How would Real Madrid fare without Zizou on the bench and CR7 on the pitch? Quite fine, actually. Isco got things started off nicely for them with a tasty free kick. That was his first attempted direct free kick in the Champions League, right on the stroke of halftime, and the second he scored from four attempts for Real Madrid in 2018. We'll be interested in seeing if that's yet another outlet for Real Madrid now that Ronaldo isn't around to hog them all and smash them into the waller over the goal. In the second half, Modric played a perfectly weighted through ball to Gareth Bale and he took a touch to set himself, then smashed it low and hard and beautiful goal from Bale but not the nicest we would see on the night. In Madrid, I mean. As in the 91st minute, Mariano Diaz with his return to Real Madrid, cut inside from the left and hit a perfect curling effort into the top corner. How's that for a return to your club? Am I right? 17 minutes played, one goal, 3-0 win for Real Madrid who lead Group G. And finally, Group H, where Manchester United had business as usual up against young boys from the Swiss Super League, Paul Pogba continued his great form from this season. Great goal scoring form, I should say, because he has gone missing in a match or two. But his goal in the 35th minute was a beauty, smashing it into the top corner on his left. Then 
later converting yet another penalty for United in the 44th minute. That's four goals in six appearances, which took him until April 7th of last season just to score four. But he wasn't finished there, as in the 65th minute, his driving run forward led to a perfect through ball to Anthony Martial, who made no mistake in scoring his first of the season from his third appearance. Now, as for Juventus and their matchup with Valencia, what was more disappointing? Ronaldo getting himself sent off, or Valencia playing with absolutely no cojones and losing 2-0 to 10-man Juventus? Let's start with the Ronaldo red, his first straight red in the Champions League in 154 appearances. On the first few glances of this one, it happened so fast and so out of frame that it didn't look like a red to me. Then I found this angle in which you can see he made a deliberate attempt to scratch Murillo or pull his hair. Is that an act of aggression in which you intend to harm the opposition? Well, yeah, albeit a weak one, a, a pretty weak one in this case. But what do you guys think? Should he have been sent off or was it a weak red card? I say that it was technically a red card as you can't scratch nor pull the hair of your opponent, but it was fairly soft, very soft, almost as soft as crying after getting sent off for pulling someone's hair. But being a man down didn't stop Juve and they went on to win 2-0 thanks to two penalties being converted by Mirelem Pjanic. Pjanic can certainly penalty, which means that Juve and United are off to the starts they wanted while young boys Valencia and Ronaldo certainly aren't. Now, it's a question of how many games Ronaldo will get, if they will appeal the red card, etc. He could be out for the match away to Manchester, which he would be quite sad about, I'm sure. But that will do it from me here today, folks. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're finding us for the first time, then definitely do hit that subscribe button to join our community. My name is Adrian. Enjoy the Europa League, and I'll see you later. Peace.